You may be seated. Okay, let the record reflect that the defendant is present along with counsel for the defendant, assistant state attorney. Both sides ready to proceed? State's ready, Your Honor. Defense? Defense is ready. Uh, I just wanted to know if the court would like an update uh, housekeeping update after these witnesses or before or whichever the court's preference on available. You can give it to me now. All right, the state may call the next witness. Uh, the next witness will be Catherine Tyson. No. Oh, all right. Okay. All right, you may return to jury. Good morning, ladies. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Okay. And did you heed my previous admonitions not to discuss this case among yourselves along with the rest of the admonitions? Okay. State recognizes the presence of the jury? Yes, sir. And does the defense? Yes, sir, we do. State may call the next witness. They will call Catherine Tyson. My name is Catherine Tyson. Catherine is spelled with a C, and Tyson is spelled T H. E I S E N. You may proceed, Ms. Ashton. Thank you. How are you currently employed? I'm employed as the Chief of the Quality Assurance and Training Unit at the FBI Laboratory in Quantico, Virginia. And how long have you been employed by the FBI? For 23 years. Um, what work did you do while with the FBI Laboratory before your current position? For six and a half years, I was a research scientist, and in that position, I researched and developed new forensic DNA typing techniques for the FBI laboratory and for other laboratories. Then for five years, I was a quality assurance specialist in the FBI laboratory, and I developed quality assurance procedures and practices for use by our laboratory. And then following that, for nine years, I was a forensic mitochondrial DNA examiner. What is your educational background that led you to your positions with the FBI? I have a bachelor's degree in biology from the University of Virginia and a PhD in human molecular genetics from Johns Hopkins University. Um, have you taught any classes in forensic DNA analysis? Yes, I have. Over my career with the FBI, I've taught numerous classes, mostly at the graduate school level, to personnel from crime labs from around the country as well as other um, labs in the world. And what specialized training, or have you received any additional training with the FBI laboratory since the uh, PhD and the master's you told us about? Yes, uh, specifically for my position as a forensic mitochondrial DNA examiner, I was in our training program for uh, over a year. And it, that training program consisted of um, formalized lectures and independent study, as well as lab work. And at the, culminate, the culmination of that was um, being subjected to numerous um, examinations, which qualified me to be a forensic mitochondrial DNA examiner. Have you ever testified um, as an expert in that area in the past? Yes, I have. On approximately how many occasions? This is my 20th time. And in how many different, uh, all, all federal jurisdictions, all state, or a mix? Um, a mix, mostly state and local jurisdictions. This time, Your Honor, I would submit the witness as an expert in the area of forensic mitochondrial DNA analysis. Okay. Your Honor. The witness will be accepted as expert witness in the area tendered. You may proceed. Thank you. <laughs> Pardon me. 
would you tell us, if you would, what type, of, type or types of DNA testing are done by the FBI laboratory? The FBI laboratory conducts nuclear DNA testing and mitochondrial DNA testing. Nuclear DNA is inherited from both of our parents, from our mother and our father, and nuclear DNA testing then gives us the ability to potentially identify a person as a source of an item of evidence to the exclusion of any other individual. Mitochondrial DNA, on the other hand, is inherited only from our mothers. So we share our mitochondrial DNA type with our mothers, with any siblings we have that share the same mother, and also by chance we share our mitochondrial DNA type with other non-related people. So therefore, mitochondrial DNA testing does not give us the ability to uh, identify a person to the exclusion of anybody else. How is a mitochondrial DNA examination conducted? There are several steps that make up a mitochondrial DNA examination. First, the DNA is extracted or isolated from an item of evidence. That DNA is then subjected to a process that we call PCR, which copies that DNA or amplifies it, which then gives us enough DNA to take further along in the following steps of the test. Once we amplify that DNA, we then type it through a process called DNA sequencing, And that DNA sequencing allows us to look at the individual building blocks of a portion of our mitochondrial DNA. That by looking at those building blocks, we can establish or or determine a mitochondrial DNA type. And in a forensic examination, we'll typically compare mitochondrial DNA types from different items of evidence, both items of evidence of unknown origin and items of evidence which may be known reference samples from individuals involved in a case. And finally, those mitochondrial DNA types can be subjected to a search in a mitochondrial DNA database. And what are the possible outcomes of a mitochondrial DNA analysis? If a mitochondrial DNA type from an item of evidence from a crime scene is different from a mitochondrial DNA type from an individual, um, from a known reference source, that item of evidence can be excluded as originating from the source of that known reference sample. On the other hand, if two mitochondrial DNA types are the same, the source of the reference sample can be included as a source of that item of evidence. If an individual cannot be excluded and is a possible source, what is the significance of that? If an individual cannot be excluded as a source of um, a particular item of evidence, we then um, calculate an estimate of how common or how rare that mitochondrial type is in the general population. And that estimate is based on the results of our database search. Why would a particular piece of evidence be, why would a mitochondrial test be used at a particular piece of evidence as opposed to a nuclear DNA test? We use mitochondrial DNA testing in or on items of evidence which we would expect would not give us enough nuclear DNA to conduct that kind of test. Um, Typically, that kind of evidence may be a shed hair or skeletal remains. Those items may not have enough nuclear DNA. Therefore, mitochondrial DNA typing gives us some DNA um, evidence, some DNA type, which then is a powerful tool for excluding a person as a source of an item of evidence. In this, in July of 2008, were you, was some evidence submitted to you for possible examination in reference to a victim by the name of Kaylee Marie Anthony? Yes, it was. Did those, (coughs) pardon me, did those exhibits include a portion of a hair designated by your laboratory as Q12 um, that was identified by trace evidence examiner? Um, Yes, the designation of that hair was actually Q12.1. The portion that you got was 12.1. That's correct. All right. Well, you also uh, submitted some buccal, uh, purported buccal swabs from uh, someone named Casey Anthony. Yes, that item was identified in our laboratory as item K1. Uh, Madam Clerk, could I have uh, items uh, for identification IU and IV? approach the witness. You might. Let me show you what's been marked for identification as IU and IV and ask if you recognize those as containing the buccal swabs reported to be from Casey Anthony that you examined. May I open this package? You may. 
Yes, this item is identified as K1, identified as a buccal swab from Casey Anthony. Right. And that was in reference to State's Exhibit IV. If you do the same examination of IU. Yes, this is another um, sample of item K1, identified again as a buccal swab from Casey Anthony. And is that one of the items that you, uh, you looked at in your examination? Yes, it was. I can identify that by the initials of um, the staff in the laboratory. Thank you. Can I get some water, please? Oh, yes. Thank you. Mr. George, would you mind getting the witness a, a bottle of water? I think we have one on the table there. Yes, sir. I'm Your Honor, State would move into evidence states exhibit IV and IU. What says the defense? No objections, Your Honor. We received an evidence the states numbered. All right. <laughs> Did you do a, a mitochondrial DNA test on states exhibit, I'm sorry, on your Q12.1? which is a portion of the hair purported to be from the trunk liner of a vehicle. Yes, I did. And were you able to get a mitochondrial a DNA? It, would it be called a profile? A profile or a type. Both type. are appropriate. Okay. Yes, I did. Did you also um, obtain a uh, mitochondrial DNA profile from <laughs> the exhibits I just showed you? Yes, I did. <laughs> Based upon those two profiles, can you uh, come to any conclusions? Uh, yes, I can. What would those conclusions be? The mitochondrial types from the Q12.1 hair and the K1 buccal sample identified as coming from Casey Anthony are the same. Therefore, neither Casey Anthony nor Kaylee Anthony can be excluded as the source of that Q12.1 hair. Further, I would not expect to see that mitochondrial DNA type in more than 0.26 of the African American population, nor in more than 1.85% of the Caucasian population, nor in more than 39% of the Hispanic population. Now, when you indicate that it, uh, you ca that result cannot exclude either Casey Anthony or Kaylee Anthony, your assumption is, your understanding is Kaylee Anthony is the daughter of Casey Anthony. Yes, that is how it was identified to me. Would that result pardon me, <clears throat> also not exclude Casey Anthony's mother. That's correct. Would it also include, and I'll just use that word include because it's easier for me to say, um, Casey Anthony's brother from the same mother. That's correct. And it would also include Casey Anthony's maternal grandmother. It would. And any maternal uncles. It would as well. All right. Now, Turning now to December of 2008, <clears throat> did you receive an additional sample uh, for mitochondrial DNA examination? Yes, I did. And was this designated by your laboratory as Q59.1? Yes, it was. And was this a portion of an exhibit identified as Q59, identified as a hair mass? Yes, that's correct. And did you subject portions of that to the same mitochondrial DNA examination as the 12.1 hair? Yes. And what were, the, what were the results? The mitochondrial DNA type from the Q59.1 hair is identified as coming from the Q59 hair mass is the same as the mitochondrial DNA type of the K1 buccal sample identified as coming from Casey Anthony. Therefore, Kaylee Anthony cannot be excluded as coming from, as not, cannot be excluded as the source of the Q59.1 hairs from the hair mass. I would not expect to see that mitochondrial DNA type in more than 0.26% of the African American population, nor in 1 .8, more than 1.85% of the Caucasian population, nor in more than 0.39% of the Hispanic population. So, 
therefore, the, based on your examinations, the hair from the trunk, Q12, and the hair mass, Q59, are a mitochondrial match. Is that correct? That is correct. And they would match either Kaylee Anthony, Casey Anthony, or anyone in the maternal line? Yes. Now, would then you look to other disciplines to further narrow down the uh, possible contributors beyond that? Yes, mitochondrial DNA alone cannot make those distinctions. But other disciplines such as trace analysis might be able to further limit the possible contributors? That is possible, yes. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross examination. May it please the court. Mr. Ashton. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, Ms. Tyson. Good afternoon. Now, you testified that you were or the quality control officer for uh, the, was it the uh, DNA2 division? Uh, no, I'm the quality manager of the FBI laboratory. Okay, so that's the entire laboratory? Yes, it is. Okay. And could you explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury exactly what that means? Um, what that means is that I oversee um, a group called our quality assurance group, and that group is responsible for um, putting into practice um, uh, numerous policies and procedures which ensure the quality of our casework. And we also um, evaluate proficiency tests, conduct audits of our laboratory, ensure that, and ensure that we meet all the standards of our accreditation. And just to kind of break that down uh, a little bit more, the policies and procedures, they're some often called protocols, are they not? Um, we do use those terms slightly differently, but in general, yes, that's correct. Okay. And what you do basically at times is you develop uh, the rules of how each item is processed and how each item of evidence uh, moves forward throughout uh, the laboratories, correct? Um, in our unit, we do that to a general um, degree, and then each individual discipline or caseworking unit um, has further procedures um, which specify how items of evidence are moved through and processed through their individual units. And what that do, and part of that, even for for your area of mitochondrial DNA, at least when you worked in that division, there would be like a checklist of things that you have to do and check off as you process that item of evidence, correct? Um, we don't actually use a checklist, but there is a set procedure that is used as cases and evidence are processed. And as part of quality control, you also have sometimes uh, people uh, checking up on the first examiner's work, correct? Yes, all of our casework is subjected to, um, at a minimum, two levels of review. And what's done in addition to that is uh, each person who works in your laboratory also has proficiency tests to make sure their work is up to par, correct? Each person who handles and processes evidence in a particular forensic science discipline is indeed subject to proficiency tests, yes. Okay. And the reason that you have all of these steps in place is to prevent contamination, correct? I believe Sustain. this witness has testified about that area, Judge. Sustain. Yes, sir. Now, the, the laboratory and part of your job as the quality control officer would be uh, to ensure, as you, as you mentioned, that everything is in compliance with the accreditation of the laboratory, correct? This is something the witnesses testified both under direct judge and cross. Sustain. Now, the your job as the quality control officer, of course, is to ensure that the integrity of the evidence is handled in its most efficient manner, is it not? Ma'am, uh, the as you testified, the entire maternal line in, in mitochondrial DNA cannot be excluded. 
uh, as to either piece of evidence that you handled, correct? In general, that is true, yes. Okay. And the item of evidence, specifically uh, the first, the Q12.1 uh, item, that there is no indication as to, or you were not given any information as to its history, correct? Um, that is incorrect. Um, I was presented with information as an examiner in a caseworking unit. I do get the um, communications that come into our laboratory about the case in general and um, have those to review during the conduct when I'm conducting my casework. So, okay, so you were informed then that uh, Lee Anthony once owned the Pontiac Sunfire, correct? I did. Hearsay. I think this witness has testified that she was given information to help base her conclusions, Judge. I don't believe that she indicated that that was the basis of any conclusions she drew. Sustained. Do you use the, this information to assist you in carrying out your work? No, I do not. Okay. So it's just gratuitous information that, that you read because you like to read up on, that, on those topics? Or I do would, you find that useful in your, in your uh, work? I wouldn't characterize it that way. All of our case files are required to have in them by our, by our um, policies the incoming, what we call our incoming letters of communication, the letters that come in with the evidence that describe the case. It is a requirement and we do read those. It's not used as a basis for my conclusions. But it is still used throughout the course of your work, is it not? I because guess you read a file before you actually go on and, and, and do the work, do you not? I certainly do read the letters, yes. Okay. So in, that, in, in those inclusions, as, as you read your file, did it include the fact that Lee Anthony once owned the Pontiac Sunfire before Casey Anthony did? Objection, hearsay. Sustained. Were you given any further information about uh, the potential people who could not be excluded, such as Cindy Anthony and her, her uh, maternal line? Objection to hearsay because the question is vague. I don't think the um, question is vague, Judge. I, the question can be asked simply by yes or no. Objection over or... Could you please restate the question? Sure, I understand. Uh, were you given any other information as to the other people who could not be excluded on the maternal line, such as Cindy Anthony and, and other relatives? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by information. Um, it may have been in the communications, uh, the names of the parents of Casey Anthony. And other relatives as well who couldn't be excluded? Um, would be excuse me, excluded? That, that could not be excluded, excuse me. Um, I don't recall specifically the mention of a Lee Anthony in the particular communications that I have. Okay, no further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? No, sir. May the witness be excused. As far as the state's concerned, yes. Thank you, ma'am. You may be excused. Thank you, Your Honor. State may call their next witness. Alina Burroughs. I'm Alina Burroughs, A L I N A B U R R O U G H S. You may proceed. Thank you. Please tell the court and the members of the jury your occupation. I am a crime scene investigator with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. How long have you worked for Orange County? I've been with Orange County since November 18th of 2003, which is approximately seven and a half years. Okay. Were you working for the Orange County Sheriff's Office as a crime scene investigator back in December of 2008? Yes, I was. Did you assist other crime scene investigators in the collection of evidence uh, at the recovery site of Kaylee Marie Anthony's remains in December of 2008? Yes, I did. Can you see that on your monitor, ma'am? Yes, I can. Are you familiar with the locations? 
I have it on unpublish. Is it still on? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Are you familiar with the location shown in the photo? Yes, I am. Okay. Does this photograph fairly and accurately depict the distance between the two locations, that being the Anthony residence on Hope Spring Drive and the scene where Kaylee Anthony's remains were recovered on Suburban Drive? Yes, it does. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce B.T. for identification into evidence. No objections. the defense. No objections, Your Honor. It will be received in evidence as states numbered. Okay, may I appropriately publish this to the jury at this point? You may. Ms. Burroughs, we have a notation on there as to the location of the Anthony home. Can you circle the area that the screen is a telestrator? Can you circle the area where the remains were located? Yes, the approximate area was right there. May I unpublish? Right. Now you had indicated that you also assisted during the execution of a search warrant on December 20th of 2008. Uh, what role did you play during that process? During this process, I facilitated the location, collection, and documentation of evidence pursuant to a search warrant at the Anthony residence. If I may, did that include uh, your seeing items before their collection? visually seeing the items before I handled them? Yes. Um, in some cases, I might see them um, in their present location, or in some cases, after they had been uh, discovered, they had been brought to me. All right. Are you familiar with whether or not there were heart stickers located in the bedroom of Casey Anthony during the execution of that search warrant on December 20th of 2008? Yes, there were. If I may show the witness QV for identification. You may. Do you see QV? Yes, I do. Is QV a fair and accurate photograph of an item that was located in Casey Anthony's bedroom? Yes, it is. Your Honor, at this time, I would seek to introduce QV for identification into evidence. What says the defense? You may. You may approach along with the court report. You may proceed. Thank you. Um, Investigator Burroughs, where was this item located? This particular item was located inside a yellow type of box, inside a dresser along the north wall of Casey Anthony's bedroom, just east of the head of the bed. The box where that was located, did it contain other items? Yes, it did. Did the other items include uh, an envelope? Yes. When the item was photographed, was the envelope just part of the background of the location where the sticker or the part of the sticker was found? Yes, it was. Okay. Is the sticker affixed to the envelope in any fashion? No, it is not. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce QV for identification into evidence. Just renew our previous motions and objections, Judge. Noting uh, the defense's previous objections, 
it would be admitted into evidence over defense objections as states exhibit numbered. Permission to publish this item to the jury, Your Honor. You may publish. and permission to unpublish. You may. May I have QW for identification, please? Do you see that item in front of you? Yes, I do. Okay. Is this a close-up of the, the same item that was displayed in 306 in evidence? Yes, it is. Does that also accurately depict the condition of the item when it was discovered during the search warrant? Yes, it does. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce QW for identification into evidence. Same motions and objections. Note in previous objections, objection would be overruled. It will be received in evidence as states numbered. If I may approach the witness with what has been marked as QN for identification. You may. You would take a look at the packaging on that item and tell me if you recognize it as something that you've had contact with in the past. Yes, I do. What do you recognize it to be? This is the same red and white heart-shaped sticker backing that was shown in the previous pictures. Was that collected and packaged by you and sealed in that envelope? Yes, it was. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce QN for identification into evidence. What says the defense? Same motions and objections. Note in previous stated objections, objections will be overruled. They will be received in evidence as states numbered. If I may have QX for identification. Do you see QX? Yes, I do. Are there other stickers in that photograph that were collected and seized by you? Yes, there are. Where were those stickers located? This um, is a sheet of heart-shaped stickers that appeared to have been cut in half. It was located inside of a black binder in that same cabinet as the previous sticker, which was located along the north wall in Casey Anthony's bedroom. Does this photograph fairly and accurately depict those stickers that were located in Ms. Anthony's bedroom? Yes, it does. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce QX for identification into evidence. What says the defense? Same motions and objections. Note in the defense's previous stated objections. Objections will be overruled. It will be received in evidence. The state's numbered. Permission to publish, Your Honor? You may publish. Can you indicate by circling the item that uh, you were speaking of? If I may approach the witness with what's been marked as QP for identification. You may. You would take a look at the packaging associated with that item and tell me if it's something that you believe you've had contact with in the past. Yes, it is. What is it? This is the sheet of heart-shaped stickers cut in half um, that was previously shown in photographs. Were those collected by you, placed in that envelope, and sealed? Yes, they were. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce QP for identification into evidence. What says uh, the defense? Same motions and objections, Judge. 
Noted in previous motions and previous objections, they will be received in evidence over the defense objections and uh, be given uh, what number, Madam Clerk? I may have QY for identification. Can you see QY? Yes, I do. Do you recognize that as item, an item collected from the bedroom of Casey Marie Anthony? Yes, I do. Does that photograph fairly and accurately depict the item collected? Yes, it does. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce QY for identification into evidence. What says the defense? Same motions and objections. Noted the same motions and objections. Objection would be overruled. We received an evidence of states numbered. Permission to publish? You may publish. And if I may approach the witness with QO for identification. If you would take a look at the packaging associated with that item and tell me if you believe that is something that you've had contact with in the past. Yes, it is. What is the item in QO for identification? This is a sheet of metallic red heart-shaped stickers with three stickers remaining on the sheet. Okay. If you look at QY, which has been introduced as 311 in evidence that is still on your screen, can you circle the item that is contained in QO? Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce QO for identification into evidence as the state's next numbered exhibit. What says the defense? Same motions and objections. Noted in previous motions, noted in objections, objections and motion. Uh, objection will be overruled. It will be received in evidence as states numbered. Thank you, Ms. Burroughs. Your Honor, I have no other questions of the witness. Cross-examination. Good afternoon, Ms. Burroughs. Good afternoon. The photograph on, can I see through here? Uh, Your Honor, may I publish uh, number 307 to both the witness and the jury? You may. Can you see... Uh, Just a sec. I'm sorry. Can you see it, Ms. Burroughs? The photo? Yes, I can. Can the ladies and gentlemen... The jury see it? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, can you see the, uh, the stamp on the right-hand corner of that item? The postage stamp? Yes, the postage stamp. Yes. Do you see 37 cents? I do. Okay. Do you know how long ago it's been since we've had 37 cent stamps? I couldn't recall. Okay. Uh, so obviously this is a very old uh, letter, is it not? Uh, the date of the letter with the 37 cent stamp, but I couldn't say when that was actually mailed. All right. I, I, I understand. Um, there were items in this box that were significantly old? I wouldn't feel comfortable making that statement. Did you see scrap items, like baby shower items? Yes, I did. Okay, and did you see other items for a scrapbook? In that box or in the cabinet? In the box. Um, no, I believe mostly baby shower items. Okay, um, can I have Q? May I publish uh, item number 311 to both the jury and the witness, Your Honor? 
you may. Can you see that, Ms. Burroughs? Yes, I can. Can the ladies and gentlemen of the jury see it as well? Okay. Now, there are also star stickers here. Yes, there are. There are a whole bunch of different stickers. I see the star stickers and the heart stickers. You see Mickey Mouse stickers? Um, I don't recall if those are stickers or if they're just um, on a paper. Okay. Do you see Pluto and uh, other Disney characters, Minnie yes. Mouse? Yes, I do. Okay. And do you see other scrapbook items in the room? In or the did room? You see? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, this was a room that had a lot of children items in there, correct? Would you define children items? Uh, scrapbooks for kids, things like that. I don't recall seeing scrapbooks for children. Did you see uh, artwork of a child? I don't recall. Okay. You don't recall on the walls seeing different pieces of artwork that might have been done by a small child? No, I don't. I recall seeing pictures, but no artwork. Did you also um, search other areas of the home for stickers? Yes. Okay. And uh, did you find any stickers in Kaylee's room? I don't recall if they were stickers, but there was a scrapbook page. Okay. And did you take photographs of, those, of, of that scrapbook? Yes, I did. Okay. And they're not listed here or in, introduced into evidence? No. Okay. And what about in Cindy, Anthony, Cindy and George Anthony's room? Did you find anything in there? Or did, did you search there, I should ask first? Yes. Okay. And did you uh, find any sticker type items in that room? No stickers were recovered from the master bedroom, no. Even ones that were actually placed on items? Or did you not consider those? Um, I honestly don't know what you're referring to. I'm asking, did you find anything stuck to a piece of paper that would be considered a sticker in Cindy and George Anthony? No. Okay. Now, I'd like to show you defense exhibit W which is a photograph of an item introduced into evidence in this case. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Show it to counsel. May I approach? approach? Yes. Since it's not introduced yet, I just want to ask you, do you understand that item to be something recovered off of Suburban Drive? To my knowledge, yes. Okay. And that is what you believe to be a sticker, correct? I never held this object. I have seen photos of this object, so I wouldn't be comfortable determining whether or not it had an adhesive side. Okay. Did you find anything remotely... Well, did you find that item at the Anthony home? This exact item? Correct. Because I have never actually held this item, and I have only seen it in pictures, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. Okay. From what you see there, do you recognize what you see there from any item that you saw in the Anthony home? Your Honor, I'm going to object because I don't feel comfortable giving her opinion about this. I, I, she can answer the last question. Can you repeat the question? Sure. Did you find that item at the Anthony home? Not to my knowledge without actually holding the item. Okay. We'll, we'll follow up with that later, but um, from what you can see, you didn't find that item at the house, right? Again, I'm really not comfortable because I don't have measurements. I haven't held this item. I wouldn't be able to say in what size and if it was comparable to other items found in the house. I, I, we understand. It's, you have limited knowledge. You, you've just seen it in photographs. Yes. Uh, but from the items you've seen in photographs, you never saw that item at the Anthony home, correct? Sustained. Okay. Uh, how far away from an elementary school was Suburban Drive? 
There was one in the vicinity. Okay. How far would you say the vicinity? I don't like to make estimates. Um, okay. Just a very rough estimate. Was it next door, across the street? There was one not directly across the street, but it was on the opposite side of the street, some distance away. Okay. Closer, uh, about 100 yards? Or like I said, I don't feel comfortable making estimates on measurements. Okay. We have a picture of Would it be fair to say that there is an elementary school about? What is the I'm sorry, Judge. Uh, BT 305. You want to publish to the jury? Yes, sir. Can you see that, Ms. Burroughs? Yes. I apologize. Can everyone see that? Okay. Would it be fair to say that approximately? 30 yards from here is an elementary school. Again, I'm not going to make an estimate as to distance, but there is an elementary school in the vicinity and it is not present in that picture. Okay. Uh, would, but my question is, is it fair to say that it's about 30 yards from there? Or if you want to give it more, you can say 50, 100, however. How because I've never been to that elementary school nor walked the distance from the crime scene, I'm not going to make an estimate of distance. I will say that it was in the vicinity. So you don't, you can't help us any more than that. Right here, ma'am. If you go further, that's a dead end, is it not? If you continue all the way down, that road does dead end. Okay. And there is nothing, no homes or anything else but an elementary school there, correct? I did not travel to the dead end of the road to be able to say there weren't residences. Okay. You were involved at the scene at Suburban Drive? Yes. Okay, and you were there for how many days? Roughly nine. Nine days. And you're aware that right here, it was cut off from the public, correct? Yes, that's correct. And you're also aware that the only traffic that was allowed through were school buses, were you not? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and that is because no other cars other than police cars were allowed through there, correct? Uh, I believe families that were picking up children from that school were allowed that, down that road as well. Okay. And no homes, no people, there was no, nothing else but a school there, right? Again, I didn't travel that road to be able to answer that question. Sustain. Could you see anything other than a school there? A home, a barn, a shack, anything? Sustain. I don't believe that. Is there anything to give you any indication other than there was a school there, madam? No. Okay. I have no further questions. In a redirect? Thank you, ma'am. You may be excused. Robin Maynard. What says the defense? I would object. Uh, the proper foundation, and we wait till this witness leaves the stand before we introduce that, so I couldn't ask her about it. Uh, you have object. some questions you want to ask her about it? That's the item that's of the photograph? Stop the witness yes. before she leaves the floor. Let me, well, he said he wanted to ask her a question, so just in case. Asked who? 
last witness about the evidence. Go ahead. Return the last witness to the stand. Ms. Burroughs, you're still in the oath. Uh, Mr. Baez, you may proceed, sir. My apologies, Ms. Burroughs. Uh, we happen to have the item that you looked at uh, the photograph of, so that way I wanted you to see it. Um, may I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. What is the item's number? Yes, the item is state's uh, identification KB, which would be? KB, it's not in yet. That's what she had off. She had offered it, and there was an objection that you wanted to question the witness. So I'm withdrawing our objection so that I can ask her about the item. Okay, and since there's no objection, that item will be received into evidence. The state's number. Have you had an opportunity to look at the item? Yes, I have. Okay. Not a, now you have it. It's not in a photograph, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Did you find that item at the Anthony home? I did not find this exact item. Okay. Did you find uh, that appears to be uh, thick, does it not? Yes. Not a flat sticker? Correct. Something that would be called, I guess, a bevel? Yes, it's a raised surface. Raised surface, mm -hmm. yes. You didn't find anything like that at the Anthony home, did you? No. No further questions. <coughs> Any uh, questions about the item? May Ms. Burroughs be excused? Yes. Mr. Baez? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Burroughs. You may be excused, ma'am. Thank you. You may collect. State may call their next witness. Your Honor, the next witness is Cindy Anthony.
Cynthia Anthony, C-Y-N-T-H-I-A, A-N-T-H-O-M-Y. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Anthony, when you testified last, um, we had gone up through the time periods involving uh, July of 2008. Do you recall? Yes. Okay. When your granddaughter was found on December 11th of 2008, where were you? Um, we were at the um, airport in Los Angeles getting ready to board a plane to come home. So you were not present then when the Orange County Sheriff's Office executed a search warrant at your home on that date? No, ma'am, we were not. Between the end of July of 2008 and December 11th, had you noticed whether or not any items had been removed or not at the house, things that normally would have been there that belonged to Kaylee. From July, what was the, from any, July what date? Any time in July of 2008 through December 11th. Um, July 3rd, I remember um, um, Kaylee's teddy bear, Teddy, was missing. Uh, did Kaylee also have a blanket with Winnie the Pooh on it? Yes. Do you recall during that time frame noticing that the blanket was missing? No, prior to that time frame, it was missing. All right. When did you notice that the blanket was missing? I hadn't seen it since the end of May. It had been a while since I had seen that blanket. Now we've seen some video of you and your husband, as well as your son and your daughter, taken in July of 2008. Is the hairstyle that you had in the videos taken when you visited at the jail, the same hairstyle that you had had for a significant period of time? Um, what's a significant period of time? Um, Six months to a year. Six months to a year, yes. Okay. How about the length of your hair over a period of time, a year or more? Um, my hair grows very fast, so prior to that, my hair was longer. How long? Um, well, even in the last several years, my hair's been down here ever since Kaylee's missing, so my hair grows very fast if I don't cut it. I have to cut it every three weeks. And do you do that regularly? Yes. Do you keep it in the approximate style or length that it is currently? Um, until recently, you know, I just started wearing my hair like this again for the summer, but all through the winter months I had grown it out again. To how long? Um, it was probably past my shoulders um, around Christmas time. Okay. The length of hair that we see in the July and August of 2008 videos. How long was it at that length? Um, probably um, maybe a year and a half prior to that. I remember in 2006 my hair was long again. It was long as long as yours is. Okay. Now has your hair been processed? Yes. Um, in what way? In uh, 2001, I started, or actually 2002, I actually started putting hair color on. Prior to that, I just, used a, I just used highlights. I just would take strands of my hair and highlight it. I actually was brunette back in 2004. Okay. Um, as we move from 2004 through 2008, did you continue to either highlight or dye or otherwise process your hair in some fashion? Yeah, since 2002, I, I quit highlighting and I just would color my entire hair. Okay. <clears throat> if I may have two in evidence, please. Oh, 
Ma'am, can you see two in evidence? Yes. Your Honor, may I publish to the jury? You may. Do you recognize that to be a photograph of your granddaughter, Kaylee? Yes. Do you have any idea when that photograph was taken? I'm not sure the exact date, but I believe it was um, early, early in um, 2008, like the first couple months of 2008. Do you see the length of Kaylee's hair in that photograph? Yes. As we moved into the spring and early summer of 2008, before June 16th, um, had her hair grown? Um, yes, but I would trim it every couple months. I would trim the ends off um, just to keep it healthy. Um, aside from trimming her hair, would you subject the, the child's hair to any sort of processing? Absolutely not. Do you have knowledge, permission to unpublish? You may. Do you have knowledge as to what processing your daughter Casey had done on her hair in 2008 or earlier? Um, Casey started doing different things after Kaylee was born. She never really did much with her hair as far as color treatment or anything, but after Kaylee was born, she started cutting it shorter, and um, once in a while she'd either highlight it, and occasionally she'd dye it back to its natural color, and then let it, would grow, and let it grow back out. Okay. And what is your daughter Casey's natural hair color? It's a brown. If I may have QQ for identification. Ma'am, can you see QQ for identification? Yes. Okay. Do you recognize the individuals in that photograph? Yes, it's Casey and Kaylee. Do you know when that photograph was taken, approximately? I believe in the beginning of 2007. Why do you think that? Um, because Casey, um, her hair, well, her hair um, was short then, but it's because of Kaylee. Kaylee was um, a little bit chunkier, and you can definitely tell that she was a lot younger. Um, plus, I remember um, the clothing that she wore and that um, her hair was a lot shorter and curlier, and that's, her hair was a lot curlier when when it was shorter when she was younger. Your Honor, at this point I would seek to introduce QQ for identification into evidence. What says the defense? No objections. Be received in evidence, the state's number. Permission to publish the item, Your Honor. You may publish. Ma'am, when would Kaylee's second birthday have been? Um, August 9th of um, 2007. Permission to unpublish? You may. If I may show the witness uh, page 497 of her deposition. Ma'am, if I could direct your attention to 
lines one through six. I don't see it. So Jack, I don't think there's a question pending and doesn't ask. This witness has not expressed any uh, inability to recollect. Verdict. Your Honor, the witness has given a statement regarding when the picture was taken, and I would like to ask her about a prior statement she made regarding the same issue. A rule at this point. I don't think that the uh, statement is inconsistent. Well, she hadn't asked her a question yet. She's just showing her something. Right. Ms. Anthony, do you recall making a prior statement in deposition that the photograph was taken around Kaylee's second birthday? Right. Basis of objection. It's leading. And this is improper impeachment. No impeachment yet. Objection overruled. They continue. Ma'am, do you recall making a statement that the photograph was taken around Kaylee's second birthday? Yes, I remember making that statement. Her second birthday being in August of 2007? Correct, but I don't think that we qualified, you know, months prior or anything. Okay. What hairstyle has your son Lee had in 2008 and before? Um, Lee usually keeps his hair short for the most part. We would shave his head, not bald, but shave it down to just, you know, the smallest um, cutting on the electric trimmers. And um, occasionally he would, he would let it grow out, and about every four to six weeks we cut it but it would never get more than like an inch long. Do you know if your son Lee processed his hair in any way? No, he never has. Does your mother live in the area? Um, she lives in Mount Dora. Do you have knowledge as to whether or not she was ever in the Sunfire? I believe she was. When? Um, we've had that car a long time, and we, I, I know that um, both Lee and Casey had driven the car up to visit my mom, and I know that they've taken her places when they were up there. All right. Prior to June of 2008, when was the last time that you recall your mom was in the Sunfire? Mm -hmm. I can't recall a specific date. But I know, you know, that she had been in it before. I mean, I, George and I drove the car as well. Um, so I know a lot of times we would trade out cars. The kids would trade um, the Sunfire for my Forerunner if they needed a bigger vehicle. So I would drive that car quite a bit. And I know I drove it up to Mount Dora as well. All right. The, the question pending is, when was the last time your mother had been in the car prior to June of 2008? I couldn't say for sure. What kind of hair does she have? Um, she's um, she's had it different lengths, but never longer than her shoulder in the last 10 years. It's always been shoulder length or a little shorter. And what color is her hair? Um, she's got blonde and a little bit of brown and mostly gray and white. Do you have knowledge as to whether or not any of your brothers have been in the Sunfire? Um, the only one that could have possibly is my oldest brother, but I don't think he has. But um, it's possible he could have ridden with either my son or um, Casey to the store or something. Okay. And what sort of hairstyle would he have had at that point? 
that he keeps his hair very short and his is blonde. In 2008, were you aware of whether or not there was any duct tape in your home? Um, I recall um, black duct tape that we had and um, I think we had blue at one point and possibly silver. I'm not sure. I know I do not want to really use it. I know I did use the black when we had protesters because I used it to wrap the no trespassing signs. Was the was any of the duct tape that was in your home um, kept anywhere other than the garage? Not that I'm aware of. Was any duct tape that was in your home used at a command center that was set up by the family? Not ours. I know that um, um, the Kid Finders Network and George had purchased um, supplies for the command center and I know that um, they did use duct tape to hold up some of the other children's um, posters and some of Kaylee's posters at the command center. But that I don't believe that came from our house. Do you recall making a statement that duct tape from your house was used at the command center? If Have you ever made a statement? Sustain, rephrase the question. Have you ever made a statement that duct tape from your house was used at the command center? If I did, I don't recall it. I could have. All right. May I show the witness? Do you remember giving a deposition in this case back in July of 2009? Yes, ma'am. At that point, you were placed under oath and you answered questions for a period of time? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I was present as well as Mr. Baez. Yes. All right, if I may show the witness page 511. Actually, on this issue, if we could go to page 570, line 13. I remember telling you about that episode, yes. Okay. What do you recall saying about the duct tape that was in your house? I remember George telling me about putting a piece of duct tape on the gas can. Um, I never saw him do that, but I remember him telling me that when the gas can came back from the sheriff's department that the little vent cover had been missing and he placed a piece of tape over it. All right. If I may refer you to 512 line 24. If we can get the question before that as well. Do you recall my asking uh, when you explained about the use of the duct tape that was in the home on the gas can, do you recall my asking where the role of duct tape was currently at the time of the deposition in July of 2009? I'd have to look at line 26 to finish, to be able to tell you that. Can I have the, yeah, sorry. All right, can you give her the whole answer? It spans two pages. You might as well go through line 12 on page 513. Through line 12, please. Okay. 
read that to yourself and tell me if that refreshes your recollection. Um, I recall that, but again, I, I recalled using duct tape at the command center, but did not know the origin of the duct tape if it came from our house. I think I was, you know, it's, I didn't specifically say who got the tape, but I know at some point that they did go and purchase duct tape. I may have QF or QC. Make sure the witness QT for identification. D right. Ma'am, do you recognize anything in QT for identification? Um, I recognize Kaylee sign, um, her poster for um, from the um, Kit Finders missing the children's poster that they made for her. Okay. Do you know where that poster was? Um, I'm not sure if it was on the inside of the tent in the middle part or on the um, one of the outside legs of the tent. That tent was moved so many times um, that I, I don't recall. And I wasn't there as often as George was, so I'm not sure if that was in the center post or on the outside post All on right. that picture. I can't tell. And when you're referring to a tent, are you referring to a tent that was used at the command center? Yes, in the beginning we had those little pop-up tents that you purchase at the store, and then at one point Kid Finders had a very large tent donated that had center poles, and that one we used um, at our last center on Goldenrod up by um, uh, East Colonial, and I can't tell where this one's taken. I can't tell from this if this is one of those pop-up ones with a large tent. Do you see an individual in the background? I see someone, but I don't know who that is. Right. If I may have QZ for identification, please. Going to be introducing this photo at the appropriate time. Just to let you know, we have no objections to the introduction of this photo at this time. All right, ma'am, do you recognize QZ as something that you've been shown before? Yes. And what do you recognize that to be? Um, and those are pictures of um, similar um, canvas items that we had purchased and had at the home. All right. Um, do those pictures on that item accurately uh, reflect items similar to what you had in your home at one time? The top item, I can't tell the size. The, it's blurred. I can't see it. The bottom one, it looks like um, the one that we used in, case, in Kaylee's room for her stuffed animals by her bed. All right. Can you testify that you had items similar to both of those items pictured in your home at one time? Um, the bottom one with the measurements, for sure. The top one, I don't know because I can't tell the size. I'm not sure how big it is. Can I have QZ for identification? <clears throat> Thank you.
May I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. I'm going to show you QZ and Exhibit 29 from your deposition. Tell me if those are identical. Yes, they appear to be. Can you see the size designation of the top item, number 2516? I can on this one, not this one. All right, on the one that was attached to your deposition as Exhibit 29, can you this read one, it on the, the one with the holes in it? Yes. Yes. All right. After reviewing that, does that size that's indicated in that photograph comport with your memory as to the size of an item similar to that one that you had in your home at one time? Yes, it's similar. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce QZ for identification. What says the defense? No objections. It will be received in evidence. It states number. Permission to publish at this time. You may publish. All right, Mrs. Anthony, the item at the top of the screen, would you describe as cylindrical? Yes, ma'am. Did you have an item like that at your home in 2008 or 2007? Yes, we did. Okay. Where was it kept? Um, at one point, we had it in one of the sheds. I remember putting, storing some of... Um, Kaylee's little um, plastic balls for a ball pit, and then at some point I got a laundry bag that had a zipper so the balls wouldn't fall out, and then I put that in the um, garage up over the um, laundry area on one of the shelves. Is that the last place that you saw the item on the top, the cylindrical bag? Yeah, I had... I hadn't looked for that item or seen that item in, in a very long time since I used that. And it probably had been maybe eight or nine months prior to the summer of 2008. Now the item at the bottom of the exhibit, which is labeled 20, 2213, Did you have an item such as that at your home in yes, 2008? We, yes. And where was the last place that you saw this item? Um, we had recently removed it from Kaylee's bedroom. We had stored her stuffed animals in it, but then I found a hanging storage thing for stuffed animals where she could actually see them. It was like a tree. And at that time, we moved her stuffed animals to that and then put that um, in the garage area. Do you recall, or did you ever make a statement that the last time that you saw item 2213 or the similar item that was in your home, uh, the last time you saw it was in Kaylee's bedroom. Yes, I remember, um, I remember stating that because that's where I, at the time I thought I had remembered seeing it, but I recalled um, that the reason why I got the other thing was to put that away and I had forgotten I had switched it out. Because there's a space between Kaylee's bed and the wall where we had kept that. And um, after a while, when I was going into Kaylee's room, I remembered certain things, and I remember taking that one out of there. All right, so you're, you agree that your memory in July of 2009 was that the last time that you saw this item, 2213, or the similar item in your home, 
It was in Kaylee's bedroom. I'm sorry, repeat it. I didn't follow you. Do you recall making a different statement in yeah. July of 2009 about the last place that you saw the item in your home that resembled 2213? Yes, I recall making that statement that I last had seen it in Keeley's bedroom. Do you recall or did you make a statement that after the police had executed the search warrant, you believed that the item was no longer in Keeley's bedroom? Again, that whole period of time, it was very difficult for me. And at that time, I thought it was still in her bedroom. But um, as I stated in the previous um, I'm questioning with you that my memory has gotten better over on time. certain things. Yes, over, over time. Okay. Permission to unpublish your own? You may. Right. If I may have 290 in evidence. May I publish, since this is already admitted into evidence, Your Honor? You may. The two bags that we were just referring to, the uh, white uh, bags that you kept stuffed animals in at one point, and then a, uh, those plastic balls that you made reference to, um, were they stored, were either one of them stored in this location in the garage? Yes. Can you circle and let uh, the members of the jury know where they were? Okay. What is that that they are being stored inside of? Um, we would put anything that would collect us, something that we couldn't wipe off, like fabric, or um, we had, um, like, cat carrier and dog carriers up there, we would store the items in a um, trash bag. Okay. If I may have 291, and permission to publish that one as well, Your Honor. All right. Ma'am, do you recognize the close-up of that portion of the garage in 291 in evidence? Yes. Okay. Is the type of container that you would have those uh, white bags in consistent with the container shown, the black, the black plastic bags, in 291? Yes, it would be in either one of them. I wouldn't know which one it would have been in. After the execution of the search warrant on December 11th of 2008, did you see either one of those items again? No. If I may have 281 in evidence and permission to publish that as well. You may. Do you see the item that you were referring to that used to be kept in the cylindrical yes. bag? Yes. Can you circle that and point it out? for the jury. Okay, what is inside of that? Um, little plastic balls that you'd find in a ball pit. May I have a moment, Your Honor? You may. I show the witness 13 in evidence. You may. Okay. 
Mrs. Anthony, do you recognize 13 in evidence uh, to be a photograph of your daughter and granddaughter? Yes. The shirt, and if we could zoom in on Kaylee, please. Do you recognize the shirt that Kaylee is wearing? The first time I had ever seen that shirt was during my deposition. Your Honor, may I publish? You may. Did you do the laundry at the home? Yes. Most of the time, George and um, Casey did it once in a while, too. Would it be fair to say that you've never seen that shirt at your house? I don't ever remember seeing that shirt. And you never saw the picture of Kaylee in the shirt until July of 2009? No. Thank you, Mrs. Anthony. I don't have any other questions of the witness, Your Honor. Okay. Be a good time to take our mid-afternoon recess. We'll be in recess to 3 o'clock. Members of the jury, please do not discuss this case among yourselves. And please remember all of my previous admonitions. We've been recess. You may be seated. We have a question from the jury. Can we see Exhibit 313? We did not see it after it was introduced. I think 313 may have been that heart-shaped item. You may want to take out the overhead uh, document. Hmm? They asked for exhibit 313. The, the other question. Uh, I, I can't answer them now. It has to do with deliberations. They want to know, during deliberations, will we get a type list of all the exhibits? So what they want is an exhibit list which we can provide them. Did you say which we cannot provide to them? I say which we can. Okay. So how do y'all want to handle the request to see 313? I don't have any objection if they want to pass it around. I don't have gloves available for them at this juncture. At, well, they asked specifically for Exhibit 313. So pull out the document camera and, and put it on that so they can see it. Once they see that, then you can uh, begin your cross-examination of Ms. Anthony.
Will we have uh, Madam Clerk make sure we have enough gloves to send back into the jury room? More than 12 packers, they will probably discard them and use them, so they, they need a box. Yes, sir. It's through the handling of the evidence. The sticker has now fallen off of the cardboard, and it was stuck to the cardboard, and I'd like it to be shown in the condition of which it was when it was collected, which I think would be the fair and more accurate representation of the actual item. State comments? As I understand it, that it was. There's no testimony that it was stuck to that cardboard. It was photographed on a piece of cardboard. Uh, if Mr. Baez wishes to call the witness back who collected the item, we have no objection uh, to that person clarifying at some point in time whether or not this was actually stuck to the item that it's with. But there is a photograph that was taken. I have no objection to that since I believe. That may not be in evidence, but obviously at the appropriate time, I have no objection to them reviewing that. The better solution. I, I, but this I is can't. not in evidence yet. We can stipulate to that this item being in evidence. I don't have an issue with that. There is specific case law that provides that when a jury asks a specific question, you answer that question. What they specifically asked for, can we see Exhibit 313? We did not see it after it was introduced. Now, if y'all want to introduce something else and show it to them subsequent to that, then that's fine, but they will see 313. That's what they asked for. I think we're going to reach a mutual agreement here, Judge. Do you want it on the document camera? Well, you know what? Put it on the document camera, and if they want to see it on their hands, they can see it on their hands. Later okay. on, you can pass it to them, but that's wasn't what they asked. I would ask if it comes to the point where they're requesting that it be uh, handed to them, that we have an instruction that at the time of collection it was stuck to a piece of cardboard. Is there record testimony that it was stuck to a piece of cardboard? I believe that in the collection of this, it does say heart-shaped sticker stuck to a piece of cardboard. Is there record testimony that says that? Yeah. Well. I believe that the record testimony is that there's it's a piece of cardboard material and then there's a symbol for what is with pink raised heart shaped material attached. Okay. Who is the witness that predicated the exhibit? Robin Maynard. Okay. Uh, did that you was last Saturday? Okay. Uh, when we take a break. We will have Ms. Peters, who covered that day, pull her testimony and see what the record says. Document camera is Let's see. You got to turn it on. Well. Okay, you got it on now. The light. Okay. It's a reflection. Why don't we do this? Let's bring the jury in. We can let them see it on the document camera, and then I can inquire as to whether or not they want to pass it among themselves to take a look at it. Okay? Yes, sir. And will we be having an argument outside of the presence of the jury? Argument or? about what? Well, the, the problem is, Judge, is that we have an item of evidence that is altered as it is being shown to the jury that was not, uh, that is not what, 
how it was when it was collected. So I, I think, in, in, in fairness, they must be made aware that this item was stuck to this piece of cardboard. They wouldn't have included the cardboard if it wasn't stuck to it. it I mean... That may be true, Mr. Baez. Uh, just a second. Let's go off the record. Call Ms. Peters up. Ask her to pull up that testimony and find it. And then we'll see whether or not it was testified to that because if it was no testimony, uh, then all we have are assumptions. So we'll go off the record now. Okay, folks, this is what I'm proposing to do. I, I would tell them that we would get that exhibit and give them an opportunity to look at it, but we will continue with the uh, cross-examination of Ms. Anthony, okay? By that time, we should have an answer to Mr. Baez's question. Is that acceptable to both sides? Yeah, let's leave it out there just in case. All right. Let's return. Uh, let's have Miss Anthony back on the witness stand. All right, let's return to jury. All right, state recognized presence of jury. Yes, Your Honor. Defense. Yes, sir, we do. Okay, Mr. Baez, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. Good afternoon, Mrs. Anthony. I want to try and take things back into uh, perspective, if I can. Your granddaughter, Kaylee, was found on December 11, 2008, correct? Yes. And on December 11, 2008, the police executed a search warrant of your home. Yes, I found out after that, yes. And you weren't home? No. In fact, you didn't go home for a couple days later. We went home the next day to gather um, our dogs. But it was a couple days before you actually went back to the house, correct? Um, yes. Okay. And after that, you were home for a few days and you got to see what the police had done in your absence. Yes. And then on December 20th, the police came back and executed a second search warrant of your home. Yes. And during that second execution of the search warrant, well, actually, let me backtrack for a moment. Um, when, they, when you got home, you saw a copy of the search warrant there and the items that they had confiscated from your home, correct? No. Okay. Did they give them to your attorney at the time? Um, I'm not sure at what point. Um we got them. It took us a while to get the copy of the items. Okay. And the 20th, when, when the police arrived at your home, it was a difficult time for you. Absolutely. And, and, and the rest of your family as well. Yes. And there was somewhat of a confrontation when, you, when the police arrived. Isn't that correct? Relevancy? It relates to the items listed. It relates to the issues raised during direct examination. I can tie it in fairly quickly, Judge. A world for now. Fair to say there was it was somewhat of a confrontational moment. Yes. Okay. And in fact, George had to be taken to the back area, correct? Yes. Yeah. 
I'm going to tie it in within a matter of three questions, Judge. Sustain this to the last question. Next question. Uh, uh, Mrs. Anthony, at that point, did you tell law enforcement that there was, that's when you told them there was a missing blanket? I don't know when I told them about a blanket. Okay. Are you aware that that's a statement you made to them at that time on December 20th? Not until you're telling me right now. Okay. Are you aware that on the search warrant of December 11th, there was mentioning on the actual warrant for uh, Winnie the Pooh blankets? These are direct lines of questionings by Ms. Drain Burdick. Approach. You may proceed. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Anthony, the, when you came back home uh, a couple of days after December 11th of 2008, your house was a mess. Yes. And the police had basically turned the house upside down. Yes. And they didn't put anything back. No. And they took items, did they not? Yes. And including, included in the items was uh, Kaylee's bedding set, correct? Um, yes, at some point her bedding set was taken. So you were aware when you came back that they were interested in her bedding material? I wasn't sure what they were interested in. They turned, they opened every just about every drawer and looked under every little thing. Okay. Now, the page five, seven. Ms. Drain Burdick had, may I publish this to the witness judge? Uh, states 5-7. That's, that's deposition. Y yes, this is testimony that uh, she was shown during her direct examination. I want to ask her some questions about Go that. Go ahead. Okay. Can you see that, Mrs. Anthony? Yes. Okay. On line, I'd like for you to read for a moment uh, lines 10 through 15. Yes. And during direct examination, when you were asked along this line of questioning, what exactly was the question asked to you during this? It's the lawyer who has to ask the question. This is improper. There's no impeachment going on with this question I'm, and answer. I'm not uh, impeaching her. I'm asking her questions that she was asked uh, during direct examination. She was shown this item and discussed it. The page that he's referring to is hearsay, and we would object on that basis. The page. Hearsay in terms of who was the person who was being questioned. Right, it's an out of court statement. If he wants to ask yeah. her it independent of it rather than reading from a hearsay document, that's one thing, but it would have to be impeaching information. He can ask the form of the question and the leading question so you can read the question and, and, and give her an answer. You're on cross examination. Go ahead. Yes. 10 through 15. Mrs. Anthony, were you asked by Ms. Drain Burdick if Casey removed any duct tape from the, from the house when she was out of jail for the period of time, the two periods of time? 
or you asked that question? I don't remember, but if it's in my deposition, then I must have been asked that question. Does that refresh your recollection that you were asked that question? Do you see that there? No, I don't remember talking about, I don't remember them asking me if Casey removed any duct tape, but if it's in there, then I had a two-day deposition, so I don't remember every single thing that she asked me. I understand. It's a couple years later. But do you respond, as far as I remember, no, because I think we only had one roll of duct tape. Impeachment, the witness said she did not remember if he wanted to try to refresh her recollection, but at this juncture she says she does not remember the question. So I object to counsel reading it. It's improper impeachment. Mr. Baez? This testimony was elicited by, we're in a little bit of a unique situation because Ms. Dream Burdick had questioned her. Go ahead and establish the predicate for past recollection recorded. Sure. If I can have just a moment, Judge. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. Do you recall giving a deposition in this case, ma'am? Yes. And if you could look at the front, the first, first page to give the date. No, no, first. Hold on. Yeah, the very front. July 29, 2009. Okay. And were you placed under oath at that time? Yes. Okay. And have you, can you read that 10 through 15 lines, 10 through 15? Um, 10 is question, okay, did Casey remove any duct tape from the house when she was out of jail? Wait, slow down. Slow down. She slow can't down. hear you. Okay. Uh, and take that. Question was, okay, did Casey remove any duct tape from the house when she was out of jail? for that period of time, the two periods of time. Can you give the answer? As far as I remember, no, because I think we only had one roll of duct tape and George was using that. So it's, it's, it was your understanding when you took the deposition that you only had one roll of duct tape, correct? Yes. During that time period when Casey was out of jail, we had a black roll of duct tape, and we were using it all the time to repair our signs that the protesters would knock down in front of our house. Okay. So yes. And your understanding was that the only one using that one roll of duct tape was George? Um, well, I... I would be using it, too, for those signs. The answer you gave in the deposition was that the only person using that one roll of duct tape was George Anthony, correct? Probably. Again, that's the context of the questioning. I understand, ma'am. Now, I'd, I'd like to talk about the... May I show the witness, Your Honor, State's Evidence 314 and publish for the jury as well? You may. Can you see that photograph, Mrs. Anthony? Yes. Can the ladies and gentlemen of the jury see the photograph? Okay. Prior to me getting into the photograph, Mrs. Anthony, I'd like to ask you, how long have you owned the Pontiac Sunfire? Um, I think since 2000. Okay. So you had owned it for eight years in total, correct? Prior to it being confiscated in this case? Um, yes. 
And your hair length has changed numerous times throughout that time period. Yes. And so has that of Casey. Yes. And so has that of Kaylee. Yes. And I know we touched on your mother as well, uh, having access to the car, but I presume her hair has changed as well. Um, her length hasn't ever gone past her shoulders. Okay. And how many inches would you say her, the length of her hair was? The longest, maybe just right to here. Okay. Can you give us a guesstimate? Five inches. Okay. And Lee's hair has also varied in length, correct? Yes, his hair is usually very short. Okay. Now, turning your focus to the photograph, this photograph was taken in early 2007, correct? Yes. And Kaylee would have been, at that time, uh, younger than two years old? Yes. Okay. Um, approximately 15 months, would you say? Um, I would say maybe 18 months. Okay. And the shorts are uh, 24. Correct. Correct. And in June 16th of 2008, a year and three months later, Kaylee has grown significantly, has she not? Yes. In fact, Kaylee no longer fit into these shorts, did she? I don't believe so. Okay. She had outgrown these shorts. She was in three T's. Okay. And these are 24 months, correct? Um, I think so. So would it be a fair statement to make that whoever put these shorts on her were not familiar with her size? Sustain. But as you testified on the direct examination, ma'am, that oh, never mind. I'll withdraw the question. Thank you, Mrs. Anthony. Redirect. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Anthony. You may stand down. Okay, members of the jury, you had asked earlier to have an opportunity to, to see Exhibit 313. Uh, we can publish it via the document camera, uh, and we can also uh, pass it around for you to look at. Uh, would you like one or both of those methods? So we will publish it on the document camera. Please read uh, the writing contained on the exhibit so the jury would understand when this item was originally taken into custody, how the exhibit currently uh, was brought into custody. Exhibit 313 is identified as a piece of cardboard matting with pink raised heart-shaped material attached. You will also notice now that it has separated.
Okay, please let us know when you're finishing it. We will pass it around. Ready? Okay, please pass it around. As evaluating the evidence, they should consider it attached. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, when this was item was taken into evidence, it was one complete. The heart was attached to the cardboard liner. Stephanie, call in next witness. Your Honor, at this time, um, after consultation with the defense, there were several stipulations. Uh, we need to microphone on the front no, court reporter to hear you. After consultation with the defense, there are several stipulations that we'd like to announce at this time, if I may approach. You may. With those, and there are two exhibits that go with this first item, QT and What says uh, the defense as to this stipulation? We have no objections to that, to those two items. And may I stand since we're doing the stipulation? Yes. Okay. You want me to read them? Yeah. Go ahead. Not only the stipulation, but there is an affidavit as it relates to one of the items, um, actually to both of the items, QT and RA. You want the affidavit, and do you also want the notice of intent to rely upon the affidavit of professional journalists? Yes. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the following stipulation between the state of Florida and the defendant. The copies of the video and still photographs from the video taken by WFTV on July 20th, 2008 are true and accurate representations of the business records of WFTV Television Incorporated. The parties have agreed to this fact and it should be considered as true in your deliberations bearing the signature of Ms. Uh, Drain Burdick, Mr. Baez, and uh, Ms. Anthony. Second document is notice of intent to rely upon affidavit of professional journalists. This document serves as notice to the above listed defendant that the state of Florida intends to introduce the document described in the attached affidavit of a professional journalist into evidence at a hearing or trial of this matter pursuant to section 90.803 paren 6, 90.5015 paren 6, and 90.902 paren 11 Florida statute. The document described in the attached affidavit of the professional journalist WFTV Television Incorporated were previously provided to the defense to the defendant's counsel as discovery. Signed by Ms. Linda Drain Burdick. <laughs> Affidavit of Professional Journalists. I, Daniel Criswell, am a professional journalist currently employed with WFTV Television Incorporated. Attach hereto 
are true and correct copies of videos or photographs produced by my company on July 20th, 2008 at the temporary Kelly Anthony search command post manned by Lee Anthony in the parking lot of the public supermarket on Chickasaw and Lake Underhill, which I have personal knowledge. The attached video recording or photograph is a true and accurate copy of the original and truly and accurately reflects the observation and facts contained therein bearing the signature of the affiant on the oath. I will now file a stipulation with the clerk. At this point, we would seek to introduce QT and RA for identification into evidence as the state's next numbered exhibits. And that's the exhibit that the affidavit is referring to. Correct. One is a photograph and the other is a very brief video. What says the defense? It will be received in evidence as state's number May we publish 317 first, followed by 316. You may. Did you see it? Mr. Perez, zoom in on the area inside the red. And that's exhibit what? The pixelated. It would that would have been three sixteen. Okay. Permission to unpublish? Have you had an opportunity to review it, members of the jury? You may unpublish. We have several additional stipulations. I remember she cannot hear you without the microphone. We have several additional stipulations to the court at this juncture. Okay. First uh, stipulation to the clerk, this will probably need an identification number because there are documents. Okay. And when the stipulation is accepted, we would move RV for identification into evidence as the next numbered exhibit. What says the defense as to the stipulation? No objections, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the following stipulation has been entered into between the state and the defense. In 2008, Cindy Anthony was employed by Gentiva Health Services. The attached documents are true and accurate copies of the business records 
Gentivia Health Services regarding Sidney Anthony's employment from January 1st, 2008 through July 16th, 2008. The parties have agreed to this fact and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. Signed by Linda Drain Burdick, Jose Baez, and Miss Anthony, the defendant. The second portion is a business record certificate. And then the third portion, which uh, I will not read the entire thing, but it is a time card history report. Any objections uh, based upon the stipulation? Any additional objections? None from the defense, Your Honor. It will be received in evidence as... Okay. There's an additional stipulation which we've asked the clerk to label as RW. It's RC. Oh, I thought the first one was RV. RB, RC. Okay. RC. Okay, as this stipulation is, I will read it and then ask the defense is this stipulation acceptable? In 2008, George Anthony was employed by Security Forces Incorporated. The attached documents are true and accurate copies of the business records of Security Forces Incorporated regarding George Anthony's employment from January 16, 2008 through July 4, 2008. The parties have agreed to this fact and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. Bearing the signatures of Linda Drain Burdick, Assistant State Attorney, Mr. Jose Baez, Counsel for Ms. Casey Anthony and bearing the signature of Ms. Anthony. Business record certificate and then the weekly time reports of Mr. Anthony. States offering this in evidence. We are, Your Honor. Any objections by the defense? No objections by the defense. It will be received in evidence as. Now, do you wish to publish any of those two exhibits by the use of the document camera? Or are you just going to? Not at this time. They can, okay. They can go to the jury during deliberation. We have an additional stipulation that I would present to the clerk that has uh, multiple documents attached to it. Okay, stipulation regarding state's exhibit RD. R is in Ron, D is in dog. Uh, okay, let's approach. are two additional stipulations. Okay, let's finish this one here. We haven't finished this one. Yes, sir. Okay. With those modifications, what says the defense as to what's the identification number, Madam Clerk? Uh, 
R.D. No objections. Okay, R.D. would be received in evidence as states numbered. I will read the stipulation into evidence. The attached documents are true and accurate records of the business records from photo bucket relating to photographs from May 24, 2007 through July 16, 2008. The parties have agreed to this fact and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. All right, you may continue. And the two final stipulations have no documents attached. If I could just approach the clerk. The first stipulation, Mr. Baez, deals with uh, identity. Yes, sir. We have no objections to that one. The following is a stipulation between the state of Florida and the defendant. The remains found on Suburban Drive on December 11, 2008 were identified as the remains of Kelly Marie Anthony. The parties have agreed to this fact and it should be considered as true in your deliberations bearing the signatures of Linda Drain Burdick, Jose Bias, attorney for Kelly Marie Anthony and Ms. Kelly Marie Anthony's signature. The second stipulation Deals with the identity of the defendant? Yes, sir. We have no objections to the identity of Ms. Anthony. Stipulation between the state of Florida and the defendant. It is agreed that at all times during the trial, all witnesses who referred to Casey Anthony were referring to the defendant in court. The parties have agreed to this fact, and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. Stipulation bearing the signature of Linda Drain Burdick. Jose Baez, attorney for Casey Marie Anthony, and the signature of Casey Marie Anthony. State may call their next witness. Thank you, Judge. The state would call Jenny Welch. While this witness is coming forward, members, there were one question that you asked concerning doing deliberations. Will you get a type list of all exhibits? The answer to that question is yes. Madam Clerk. Welch, W-E-L-C-H. You may proceed, Mr. George. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Uh, Ms. Welch, you are a CSI investigator for the Orange County Sheriff's Office? Yes, that's correct. Uh, uh, ma'am, I, I want to draw your attention to August 13th of 2009. Uh, on that date, did you come in contact with the defendant, Casey Anthony? Yes, I did. Uh, and why did you come into contact with her in that case? I came into contact with her to photograph a tattoo that was on her back. Previous motions and objections. Noted in previous motion and noted in previous objections. The court will stand by prior rulings. Objection will be overruled. Thank you, Mr. Baez. Uh, in total, how many photographs did you take? I took a total of 23 photographs in this instance. Uh, they weren't all of the, were they all of the tattoo? No, they were not. Let's go first through the uh, I'm showing you what's been previously marked for identification Q. Well, 
Oh, I would, Judge. That would probably help a little bit. Uh, can you see that now? Yes, I can. All right. Um, do you write, I'm sorry, QU? Do you recognize QU? Yes, I do. Uh, can you, what is that? Did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. Is that a fair and accurate representation of the photograph you took of the defendant on August 13th of 2009? Yes, it is. Cite no predicate. Alvaro? Let's go to H. Okay, I'm now showing you what's been previously, previously marked for identification HJ. Uh, do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. Uh, did you take that photograph? Yes, I did. Uh, is that a fair and accurate representation of the defendant and the tattoo uh, as you saw it on August 13th of 2009? Yes, it is. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't have any further questions of this witness at this time. Cross-examination. No questions. Okay. May the witness uh, be excused. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. You may be excused. Thank you. Uh, at this time, the state would call Bobby Williams. You solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Tell the government. Bobby Williams, B-O-B-B-Y-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. You may proceed, Mr. George. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Williams, how are you employed? I'm currently employed at Cast Iron Tattoos. And what do you do for Cast Iron Tattoos? I'm a tattoo artist and manager. How long have you been a tattoo artist? As of June 5th, 2011, I've been there uh, eight years. That kind of ans answers my next question. Oh. Were you working at Cast Iron Tattoos back in July of 2008? Yes, sir. Uh, do you know Casey Anthony? Yes, sir. How long have you known her? Roughly, say about seven years. Okay. Sir, directing your attention to July 2nd of 2008, did you see the defendant on that day? Yes, sir. Objection noted. We have time to renew our previous motions and objections. Objection overruled. No other previous objections. You may continue. Thank you, sir. Uh, where did you see her? At, at the shop. All right. Why did you see her at the shop? She uh, she came in to get tattooed. She had an appointment. Okay. Uh, do you know when she made that appointment? It was probably three to four days prior. Did she make that appointment with you? Yes. Uh, was that appointment in person or over the phone? Over the phone. Did you recognize her voice? Yes. Did she identify herself? Yes. When you spoke with her a couple of days before and she made the appointment, did you ask her what she wanted done? Yes, sir. What did she tell you? Uh, Bella Vita in a feminine type font. In a feminine type font? Feminine. Okay. Thank you. Now, is that a routine question that you would ask what, they, what a customer wants done? Uh, usually. Okay, why? Uh, just to get an idea of what they want and uh, just to give me time to get stuff drawn up and make any changes before they actually come in. So did the defendant make her appointment? Yes, sir. Now, when she arrived, did you already have the, d the design ready to go? No, I ended up actually drawing it that day. You drew the, de you drew the design? Yes. All right. Uh, and did you apply the tattoo? Yes, sir. Uh, how long did the tattoo take to apply? Uh, with drawing time, roughly, probably about 30 minutes or so. Okay, let's bring up here. 
Sir, I'm showing you what's been previously marked for identification HJ. Do you recognize that? Yes, sir. What is that? Bella Vita. Okay. Is that the tattoo that you, uh, that you drew on the defendant on July 2nd of 2008? Yes, sir. Is that a fair and accurate picture of what you did? Of what yeah. you did? Yes, sir. All right. Your Honor, at this time, the state would move what's been previously marked for identification HJ into evidence. We renew all previous motions and objections. Approach the sidebar. Let's go back on the record. Let's return the jury. Okay, state recognized presence of the jury. Yes, sir. The defense. Yes, sir, we do. Mr. George, you may continue. Thank you, Judge. Uh, I guess when, when we let the state was moving what's been pre previously marked for identification HJ into evidence. Same objections? Yes, sir. Renew all previous motions and objections. Noted in previous motions, noted in previous objections. It will be received in evidence as states number. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, at this time, I would like to uh, publish. You may. 321. Okay. All right, sir. Um, You drew out this uh, this design before the tattoo was actually applied, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, the star-like figures, was that something that, that you designed? Yes. Uh, before applying the tattoo, uh, did the defendant uh, basically sign off on it or agree to it? Yes, she did agree to it. Okay. You want to this on the unpublish it? You may. All right. Uh, you said that this tattoo took about a uh, half hour to apply. Is that correct? Yes, sir. When Ms. Anthony first came to your shop, how would you describe her demeanor? How was she acting? Uh, normal. Overall. And uh, have previous motions and objections as to this topic, Judge. Overall. You may answer the questions. Normal. What does that mean? Um, didn't seem upset about anything. Did she seem happy? Yeah, I guess pretty happy for the most part. Okay. Uh, while you were applying the tattoo, did you have any conversations with her? Um, not other than asking her if she was doing okay during the process of it. Okay. Did she indicate that she was doing okay? Yes, she was fine. All right. What was she doing while you were applying the tattoo? Uh, she was on the phone. Okay. Is that the majority of the time? Yes, sir. After the tattoo was applied, did she, I'm sorry, how much does a tattoo like that cost? Uh, that one was 65. Right. Did she, uh, Overall. Did, uh, how did she pay you? Cash. Okay. Uh, did she immediately leave the, the store at that point? Uh, no, sir. What happened? Um, coworker and I, we ended up ordering pizza and she actually had a couple slices. Okay. And then. The, Who paid for lunch? Uh, she did. Right. Directing your attention to July 15th, did you have the occasion to see the defendant again? Yes, sir. Where did you see her? Inside the shop. Okay. Uh, when she came into the shop, why did she come in? Did she tell you? Uh, she came in to set another appointment. When did she make that appointment for? Uh, I believe it was 19th. Uh, yeah, the 19th, that, so a Saturday. When she came into the store, well, actually, let me go back a little bit. When she came to see you on the 2nd, did she come by herself? Yes, sir. When she came to see you on the 15th, did she come by herself? Yes, sir. Uh, when she came in on the 15th and made another appointment, how was her mood? Uh, same. Oh, real. I'm sorry? Uh, same, just normal. Okay. Normal meaning what? Uh, happy, not seem to be, be upset or anything. All right. And she made an appointment for two on the fifth, on the nineteenth. Yes, sir. Uh, now, did she tell you what design that she wanted applied on the nineteenth? Uh, no, not at the time. What did she tell you about uh, the design? Uh, she just wanted to. It was an appointment for her and a friend that was coming out of town, and she didn't really describe a design that she wanted at the time. Okay. Did she say what the possibilities were? Um, 
you know, chances are it maybe it was I think it was the uh, either be a matching tattoo with the friend or either they could have been getting like uh something completely different. So I guess she was just pretty undecisive about it. Knowing her as long, were you aware that she had a daughter named Kaylee? Yes, sir. Uh, did she mention anything about Kaylee when she visited you on July 2nd? No, sir. On July 15th, did she, or did, did she mention her daughter Kaylee? Uh, yes. What did she say about her? She's with the nanny. Okay. Uh, did she say anything about bringing her daughter into the shop? Yes, uh, Katie would be in the shop on the 19th when she came in for her appointment. Okay. Thank you very much. I have no further questions of the witness. Cross-examination. Good afternoon, Mr. Williams. Good afternoon. Sir, uh, is it customary in your business that people get tattoos to remember their loved ones that have passed? Uh, they do, yes. Okay. And that's something you do quite often? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you do the tattoo for George and Cindy Anthony that they've done, that they've uh, had to commemorate uh, Kaylee Anthony? No, sir. All of them outside the scope. Sustain. Okay. Uh, did you do, did you have any other interactions with, for tattoos for any other members of the Anthony family? Outside the scope, irrelevant. Sustain. I have no further questions. Mr. George. When she came in on the second and got her tattoo, did she appear to be mournful? Excuse me? Was she mourning? Did she appear to be mournful? Objection, Judge. Your Honor, this is a direct question. Just a second. Objection, and we have a motion as well. Mm -hmm. Approach the sidebar. Okay, Mr. George. Thank you, Judge. I have no further questions of the witness. May the witness be excused. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You may be excused. Okay, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this concludes the presentation of evidence uh, for today. Uh, and I will see you in the morning at 9 a.m. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, the defendant wants to renew a motion for mistrial on several grounds. One, to renew the one we made the other day regarding the morphing of the photograph of the, of the tape and the skeleton and so, uh, so forth. Additionally, now, uh, today, we have issues regarding the uh, heart shaped sticker that did not match anything whatsoever that was described by FBI agent Fontaine as being dime shape. Uh, we've objected that. We did pretrial motions on that and it caused speculation. And then, of course, the last thing was the prosecution trying to introduce the issue of remorse. You did, of course, sustain the objection, but the jury heard the question. So on those basis, and, and uh, indeed uh, reminding you again of the motion, the consciousness of guilt argument uh, the, uh, for what it is worth, uh, to you on that, uh, uh, the Florida Supreme Court ruled in Minna versus State that the behavior has to be susceptible of no prima facie explanation except consciousness of guilt. The state has not met that burden, and with respect to that, the post behavior of this uh, defendant, that the Minna court says it should not be admissible, and we're asking for a mistrial on that basis. Thank you very much. Reply from the state of Florida. As to the um, uh, the supervision video, there's no new arguments presented, so I'll make no new response. Um, as to the tattoo, at this point, 
the only evidence presented before this court as to the defendant's um, version of these events is that her daughter was alive uh, and absent from her custody against her will. The fact of her obtaining a tattoo that says um, something which, hope, which the court may eventually take judicial notice means the good life or the beautiful life is certainly inconsistent with the stated defense. Obviously, counsel's opening statement presenting an alternative version is not in evidence before the jury yet. The only version of the defendants we have so far is the, the various versions of the Zanny story. So I would submit that that is relevant. As to the question asked by counsel that was not answered, the defense asked the question, quote, is it customary in your business that people get tattoos to remember the loved ones that have passed? Um, clearly, we would submit that it was an appropriate question of the court sustained the objection to ask about whether the demeanor of the person requesting a tattoo was consistent with um, someone uh, asking for a tattoo because loved ones had passed. Uh, we don't believe that that was a question that um, went to the remorse issue. It was a question that went to a response to the defendant's question. The court sustained the objection. It wasn't answered. And I would submit that there's no grounds for mistrial in this case, as to any of these grounds. Motion for mistrial will be denied. Okay, I guess the only housekeeping matters we need to take up is uh, the state is making a request for the court to take judicial notice. My suggestion is that the dictionary that you're going to use, that you get a copy of that page, cover, sheet, etc., to the defense so they can have an opportunity to examine it tonight. It would not hurt if you got me a copy of that also. Uh, we will uh, do that if it if the court takes judicial notice, then the court will give the meaning of that phrase. Then I take it at that point, the state of Florida will rest. Yes, Your Honor. There, there are two items uh, that have been marked for identification and identified: uh, states exhibit IP and IQ which we will be formally moving into evidence. These are two of the uh, canned samples of the, car, of the uh, spare tire cover. They've been fully identified. I just realized we haven't actually formally moved them in, so we would be doing that. Um, and aside from that, I believe we would be uh, resting. Okay. As we discussed earlier, I believe it's sidebar, uh, despite the efforts of the defense, uh, they were originally told to be prepared on Thursday. Uh, they tried to move some witnesses up to Wednesday, but they could not do that. Uh, so then we will start out uh, on Thursday uh, with the defense's uh, presentation. And uh, I take it that after the state rest that uh, the defense will be prepared to make its motion for a judgment of acquittal. Okay. One suggestion I would make um, to lessen the inconvenience to the jury, we, we will commit to the court that the only things that we have left to do are the judicial notice and put those two cans into evidence. So we would suggest for the jury's comfort that we do the JOA argument tomorrow with the assumption that all the evidence is as we have seen. And then when we come in on Thursday, we will very quickly do those last bits rest and the defense can begin their case. Other, I mean, if the court wants to bring them in for those couple of minutes in the morning, we can do that. But I thought for their convenience, it would be better to do it that other way. Mr. Mason. Prosecution needs to rest or not rest. I'm not going to make an argument until they rest. We'll bring them in tomorrow then. Okay, as I previously stated, they will, as I told them, they will be here in the morning. Now, 
This is food for thought for the defense. Since we will be working on Saturday, do you want to work any extended hours on Saturday? Do you want to stop at 1 o'clock? Choice is up to you. I'm hearing from my elders that uh, <laughs> 1 p.m. is the max. Uh, I just asked for I, I, I understand uh, we may have witnesses from out of town that we might want to go a little bit beyond that, but I, I for, for scheduling purposes, I would like to stick to the 1 o'clock schedule. That's fine. The only reason I asked is if you go beyond that, I have to make arrangements uh, to feed them here. Uh, so uh, I promise to let the court know as soon as I know if that's going to be an issue. Yeah, because I, I have to make those arrangements because they are not fed here on Saturdays. So that's why I was asking the question. Yes, sir. The thing I wanted to address is since we are going to come back tomorrow, the defense has indicated they are not calling any witnesses till Thursday. Is that correct? Can we take them at their word on that? As opposed to having some surprise tomorrow when we only bring the information for the argument for the judgment of acquittal. Uh, I think I need to answer that. Yes, you, well, yes they do. Well. I, I think I made the announcement that uh, the state will put on whatever they need to put on tomorrow, that uh, you will rest, and that we will hear the motion for the rest of the directed verdict, and then the defense will make their presentation on Thursday. I thought that was what I said. I don't know what I'm going to do, Mr. Mason. Council has cases that he is planning to rely on. Did he provide those to us this evening since we've provided ours to him a few days ago? Since he will be first thing, it. first thing in the morning. Now that you finish your stuff, I'll work tonight and I'll get it to you in the morning. The law is the law, folks. I mean, uh, the law and circumstantial evidence is is the law. I mean, there's no great mystery. The cases that the state uh, cited in their book uh, are contained in the case that Mr. Mason is familiar with that I mentioned to the two of you, uh, Serrano uh, and uh, the facts are the facts which both sides are well aware of what the facts are. Uh, and uh, so we will see. Anything uh, else? Now, so we won't get one last thing. The Grief expert, have y'all arranged depositions for that? I believe it's set for Saturday afternoon, as I recall. Okay. I think I have given y'all two cases. There's a, another case. Let me see if I find it. Another case for your consideration that. I found was the following case. Durbad, D-O-R-B-A-N-D, versus State, 12 Southern Edition, 3rd, 255, 
a 2009 decision of the first district court of appeals uh, while it does not exactly uh, deal with the issue of grief it has uh, some application to this particular case since it talks about issues in that particular case the state placed heavy emphasis upon the defendant's calm demeanor following a traumatic shooting and the defense wanted to offer evidence to explain that so you may want to read that for your edification Okay, anything else, folks? From the state? Okay. We'll be in recess at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning.